So this is the Galaxy Note 10. It's a beautiful, beautifully crafted device by Samsung. But this is Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Samsung Galaxy Note 10's bigger and badder brother, I guess. But in my eyes, I know a lot of people don't know which one they should pick up. I know one is definitely greater than the other in some people's eyes, but I wanna talk about my opinion and exactly which one I think that you should pick up in 2020. Hey guys, Darsh here, nice to be back. Happy new year. Welcome into a new year of the channel. I'll talk a little bit about that in my next video, but for now, I wanna talk about the Galaxy Note 10 and which one you should pick up, the little brother or the big brother? Without any further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so I want to talk about one big kind of quirk that I have, and it's, it's related, I swear. So a couple of years back, I had the Nexus 7. It was a tablet that Google released, and it was honestly pretty cool. It was in a pretty slim form factor. It had a seven inch display, and you could fit it in your back pocket, and it was full 1080p. It was honestly great. But my biggest caveat was people were like, oh, phones are gonna get bigger and eventually we're gonna reach that size. What are we gonna call like the new Nexus at the time, the new Google phones, can we Nexus 7? No, it, won't. it doesn't work. But now in 2020, a couple years later, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus has a 6.8 inch display and that's massive. Honestly, I don't like super, super big phones. I think that super big phones are great for people who have huge hands or who want something really, really big if they need it like for sight or whatever it may be. But in my opinion, I think the Note 10 has the perfect form factor. Okay, so let me break it down for you. The Note 10 has a 6.3 inch display. It's a 1440p display. It's pretty crisp, has an over 400 PPI, so you know it's sharp. And then the Note 10 Plus has a 6.8 inch display that ranks it at 4K. Now they're both beautiful displays by far, deep blacks, high contrast, yada, yada, yada. You've heard it all hey before. Guys, sorry, just quickly needed to interject right there. Um, realized as I was editing, I kept saying that the Note 10 Plus had a 4K screen and that the normal Note 10 had a 1440p screen. I actually realized while I was editing it, I'm wrong. The Note 10 Plus has a 1440p screen or basically like 2K and the Note 10 has a 1080p full HD display that's been upgraded and certainly tuned by Samsung for better performance. But yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know and correct myself right there. But my opinion about the matter is, you're not using the Note 10 Plus in 4K and I'll get to that a little bit later, but you're gonna be using it in 1440p, the same as the Note 10 and on a smaller screen, pixels more dense, it's just, Makes more sense, the Note 10 will work out a lot better for you in the long run when it comes to looking at it. Now, form factor, that's preference, but in my opinion, the Note 10 with a smaller form factor is definitely the way to go. But though it has a smaller form factor, it doesn't mean that it's not punching a kick when it comes to performance. So I've used this for everything, like when it comes to gaming, watching movies, watching TV, listening to music. Um, on my day-to-day, -day, I use it to check out my calendar, I've used the S Pen and all of its features, and honestly, there's no performance hiccups I've featured with the Note 10, even though the Note 10 Plus is supposed to be the bigger, radder brother. So in this case, the Note 10 Plus comes with a Snapdragon 855 processor. Now it's an amazing processor. I wonder where else it's in. Oh yeah, it's in the Galaxy Note 10 as well. They're the exact same processor. Where the real difference lies within the specifications besides the dis display, that's all lays down and all goes down into the RAM. Now, RAM, let's talk a little bit about RAM. Why do phones feel the need to overcompensate? So the Note 10 Plus here, it's a really big phone. It's really nice, it's amazing and everything, but it has 12 gigs of RAM. Now, from my just personal opinion, you don't need 12 gigs of RAM. I have a computer here. It edits my 4K video. It's recording everything right now. It's running my entire setup and it has eight gigs of RAM. 12 gigs of RAM on a phone is a thing is a little bit excessive. Regardless, 12 gigs of RAM is there for you if you wanna do some really power crunching heavy stuff. But the Galaxy Note 10 has an eight, eight gigabyte RAM size and that's honestly really good. Eight gigs got me through everything that I needed and it wasn't pushing the phone to a point where it was just like always hot. It was fine. It worked out great for me and I really did enjoy it. So honestly, when it came to performance, it was pretty good. But performance ties in a little bit with battery life. And that's what I wanna talk about the 4K issue I was talking about earlier. So with the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, you can only imagine pushing 4K pixels is a lot to do. And if you're running that many pixels, your battery's gonna be working very hard. So needless to say, if you're running 4K, I hope you have a really, really nice power bank because you're gonna be needing to charge that thing all the time. But the Note 10, you don't never need that. But other than the battery life with the different screen discrepancies, both running at 1440p, I got a decent amount of time out of it. I got them from five to six hours of screen on time when I was using them conservatively and close to four and a half when I was using them pretty 
properly. So ultimately they both work out the same. The only difference in milliamp hour, like the actual rating of the battery is only a thousand milliamps. So it's not too, too much considering the screen jump because one would definitely require more power even if it's not running 4K. But yeah, that's just my opinion on the screen and the battery life and everything, which works out quite well. But one feature that I haven't touched on yet that I think that everyone's holding out for right now is the camera. So the camera on both of these devices are fantastic and they're fantastic because they're the exact same cameras. So there's a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera. There's two 12 megapixel cameras. One's an ultra, one's like a focal like zoom lens. It's a two time optical zoom. And one is just normal, normal lens. Now the zoom lens ultimately is used same as an iPhone for portrait mode. And the only difference between the cameras and the camera sensors is that one has like a true depth sensor and that's for the Note 10 Plus. The true depth sensor ultimately allows you to like do other things with the S Pen. So one of the features within the Note 10 that was really hyped up was the AR capabilities. You're basically able to take a video of things and annotate it in augmented reality with the S Pen, which is cool, but I personally don't see any application for that. I don't, I don't use it. Um, but besides all that, it also can help a little bit with taking portrait photos or like live focus photos. So you can like edit the background, make it like look all blurry and stuff. Like that's all cool. I like that, but still definitely the Note 10 kind of wins on that one and takes the cake. Now I want to end off with one thing and that's pricing. Now I'm going to give you Canadian pricing because I'm a true Canadian. Uh, so for one, $12.59.99, that's already a ton of money, right? That's the Note 10. <laughs> The Note 10 Plus rakes in at $14.59.99. That's an extra $200 for a phone that only has minuscule and marginal differences with the other. I personally think with all my heart, the Note 10 is definitely the way to go, but I'm down for a discussion about it. My Twitter, my Instagram, everything's linked down below. Let me know what you guys think and let me know what you guys wanna see next. With all being said, thank you guys so much for watching and for sticking around. Happy New Year, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Later.